And now here is Newsmax TV's Ed Berliner. Yes, he is. Thank you very much. I thought we were going to talk a little bit about sports first. We've got to get you in on this. Because we're going to go to sports. It is one of the things that absolutely has America completely enraptured, engaged. Everybody's talking about it right now. Stay with me here because there's cheating in Major League Baseball. I know. You're stunned. You're amazed. Now, for those of you who don't think it actually really happens, let's start this out by taking you inside a Major League clubhouse. What's that on your chest? Crisco. Bardol, Vagisil, any one of them will give you another two to three inches drop on your curveball. Of course, if the umps are watching me close, I just rub a little jalapeno inside my nose, get it running, and if I need to load the ball up a little, just wipe my nose. You put snot on the ball? I haven't got an arm like yours. I got to put anything on it I can find. Someday you will, too. Well, for those who think the movie Major League was stretching the truth, here's the only clue. They nailed it. Safe for pointing out plenty of guys try to cheat in baseball, but perhaps never do it as badly as Michael Pineda. The New York Yankees pitcher had been seen on a previous start with all sorts of foreign substances on his hand, other parts of his body, yet it took a complaint from Boston Red Sox manager John Farrell to finally have him booted from a game now suspended for 10 games. The fact another pitcher tried to throw the current equivalent of a spitball, not so shocking. It's how he did it. The fact everyone knew he was cheating once prior. And then after being busted for those 10 games, his attempt at trying to excuse it as an attempt to protect hitters from being injured by his pitches will forever rank as one of the more hysterical moments in sports fraud. They're going to check Pineda. Remember, against the Red Sox, he had what looked like pine tar on his hand. Later said it was dirt. But Farrell is going out to check Pineda. Another check in his back. And just like that, man is out of the game. He said that he really couldn't feel the ball, so he needed something on it to make sure that he got a good grip and make sure he wasn't hurting the other pitchers. The, the irony, <laughs> as I understand it, is that if he wanted something tacky, you've got the rosin bag, you've got other things you can do. It's just that swath of pine tar on his neck. Oh, but stop. It, it only gets better from there. Uh, let us welcome in now. Uh, I've had the opportunity many times to get a chance to talk to him. He now covers Major League Baseball for the New York Post. Ken Davidoff, who is there in New York. Ken, I, I thank you for being with us. And I guess the first thing we have to start with is maybe the, the funniest thing is he did it twice, and everybody knew that there's television cameras rolling. So this has to be, uh, you hate to say this, my grandmother said never call anybody stupid, but it sure fits here, doesn't it? This is hysterical. Yeah, yeah, this is uh, really not too bright on Michael Pineda's part. And uh, as you said, he, he was let off the hook the first time and then came back uh, even more blatant. That's why the Red Sox manager, John Farrell, felt uh, compelled to call him out, and that's why he got ejected. Now, there's a love-hate relationship here that we've always seen with fans because the fans will say somebody's cheating. Uh, the media, of course, we get all upset that somebody cheats. The players themselves, they all know that everybody tries to cheat. And isn't it that love-hate comes in with the fans where they go, well, if you're winning, it's okay if you cheat a little bit. We, we still don't mind every now and then. Yeah, I mean, I, I think, you know, it, it's become a complex issue thanks to the evolution of illegal performance-enhancing drugs. And I think this is a little more old-timey, this stuff. Uh, I know you guys were mocking him for saying uh, he wanted to get a better grip on the ball, but that's all pitchers say that, and all hitters say they want pitchers having good grip on the ball, especially in cold weather. Uh, so there you go. Well, Ken, I'm just kind of curious, since this all went on between the Yankees and the Red Sox, what can we expect the next time they get together? Do you expect the Yankees to, to counter with some sort of uh, measure against one of the Red Sox hitters or pitchers? And, and if so, what, what might that be? What might the Yankees have up their sleeve in terms of complaints? Well, the obvious response would be to call out one of the Red Sox pitchers that the umpire search him, and then the, uh, the biggest suspect among the Red Sox pitchers is Clay Buckholz. He was suspended last year against Toronto of messing with the baseball. He has very greasy hair, so he's an obvious suspect. However, I don't think the Yankees are really looking for revenge passionately. I think they're, they realize that uh, had the situation been reversed, they would have done the same thing to a Red Sox pitcher with pine tar on 
on his neck. Well, can we know uh, we know Pineda is facing a 10 game suspension here, but do you think Girardi uh, should face any consequences in this? It's, he's a very smart manager. He knows his players very well. Should he let his pitchers walk onto the mound with a foreign substance like that on their bodies? Well, I think the consequences Joe Girardi is facing is, is a tarnish on his reputation because there's, there's no doubt he is accountable for what went down. And uh, you're right, he's generally a smart man, and it's his job to make sure Michael Pineda does not do precisely what he did there. I don't know if a suspension is necessary. I think he's getting uh, publicly uh, criticized for it, and I think it's merited. Ken, let me go back a little bit to the, the fans and the way that they always think about cheaters. Is it not true, though, that as far as the Yankees fans are concerned and a lot of fans, that yes, he cheated, we'll let him go. It's, it's, it's a terrible thing, but if you win, if we get to the World Series, if you make us all happy, that everybody will be happy. It's not just in baseball, but you have the occasional cheat in a lot of other sports. As I think Richard Petty said a uh, hundred years ago, he says, if you ain't cheating, you're not trying. So everybody still knows it happens. So the fans, though, aren't they still really willing to forgive as long as you win? Well, there are hundreds of millions of fans out there. I'm certainly not willing to generalize them. They're all sharing one brain, first of all, right? Well, no, but there are those who would be willing to say as long as you win, we're okay. Not all of them. You're right. Yes, there are those. Yes, yes. Not all of them. Uh, yeah, of course. Well, Ken, you know, it, we talked about this earlier. In fact, you, you, you made a statement that almost sounded like a legal disclaimer. And then we've gone through uh, all the stuff with performance enhancing drugs and A-Rod situation. Uh, but, but I'm just curious now, in terms of the players' union and this situation with Pineda, is he going to be able to appeal this suspension, uh, is that going to be one area where this plays out, the, the dynamic between uh, uh, the, the players' union and the management or the commissioner's office? What, what's the next installment for Pineda in his, in his, quote, dispute, or is he just going to take his punishment and move forward? Yeah, he announced yesterday that he was taking his punishment and moving forward. He had the right to appeal, but chose not to. Let me ask him a little bit about Gaylord Perry because it's, it's one of the fun things here, Ken. Gaylord was a guy who always he used the splitter or the, the spitter, rather. I mean, everybody knew it. Uh, he's a member of the Hall of Fame. You, I believe, are still a member of the Baseball Writers Association in the Hall of Fame. Uh, I believe, do you still have a, a vote in the Hall of Fame uh, balloting? Yes, I do. Okay. With regard that he is in the Hall of Fame and he cheated and he's, he's an open cheater. Do we now need to go back and start reviewing some of these, these cheats that are in the Hall of Fame, these guys who say that, yes, we did break the rules, and as some people say, maybe note that they're in the Hall of Fame because they got away with it? Uh, I don't think to review in this area, and I think that history should inform the current voting body. I know it sure as heck informs me uh, when you look at these steroids guys that maybe they're not as horrible human beings as we've been led to believe that, but as you guys said, uh, people have been uh, seeking competitive advantages since the dawn of time, whether it's sports, business, or, or whatever else. So you know, maybe it's not that horrible that when guys use steroids. Well, that's, that's the good point here. What's the difference then in your opinion and in the opinion of those who cover baseball on a regular basis when you look at guys like Perry who cheated and got away with it or uh, certainly are in the Hall of Fame now and a guy like A-Rod sitting there who people, I mean, man's a pariah right now. They want him out forever and never let him back into baseball. So what's the difference if you're at least trying to get an edge but you're getting a 21st century edge that wasn't available to a guy like Gaylord Perry back in the 70s or the 80s? Yeah, precisely. And I can only speak for myself. I can't speak Please. for other baseball writers. Please. I can only barely speak for myself. Um, <laughs> You've always so, been good. Uh, Go for it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my, yeah, I, I believe, look, my, my personal belief is if baseball outlawed it, if you were found guilty and, and were penalized, then I think that should factor into your Hall of Fame consideration. And in the modern day, that means Manny Ramirez, that means uh, Rafael Palmero, guys who, who were caught using steroids. Uh, but in the, on the other side, if you uh, maybe committed some acts that were not illegal in baseball world and you never were caught, a lot Barry Bonds and Roger Clemens, and I vote for those guys. Well, there, there are so many, quote, tricks of the trade. We've been talking about pitchers, but one of my favorite things to see was a batter coming up, and especially the backside of the batter's box, suddenly taking the cleats and knocking the lime all over the place to blur that batter's box. And to this day, I can remember a call. Uh, the legendary Milo Hamilton, the Atlanta Braves, Henry Aaron comes up, 
and hits one out of the park, but the M says, oh, you're out of the batter's box. So it happened to one of the greats, uh, and I guess there's always a challenge in terms of enforcing the rules and how the envelope is, um, is pushed a little bit. Ken Davidoff, we very much appreciate your take. Uh, from the New York Post, one of my favorite newspapers, just in terms of headlines alone, uh, set aside your great, uh, your great work as a sports columnist there and a writer on baseball for the Post. Thanks so much for your time. Anytime, guys. Thanks a lot, Ken. You know, and this brings up a whole different topic. The greatest New York Post had said to say it wasn't about baseball. It Go had ahead. to do. It had to do with crime, and it read as follows: Wacko whacked in wacko whack job. Just thought. It I thought you were going to throw it to headless man dies in topless bar. That's another good That's one. That's another one from the New York Post. Sure. Or, or one, one of the great ones. The the ad executive who came up with a certain line of vegetables. Jolly Green Giants creator dies. May he rest in peas. P E A S. Oh. Very clever. No uh, short of clever uh, headlines. That's headline. right. Well, no it's short. Friday. The puns are out, and we know that the uh, baseball envelope pushers. And are we're not out cheating. There. So there you go. That's right. We're just we're working with what we have and what we remember. None of us Ed. are on performance enhancing substances. Just in case you're wondering. Oh, that's pretty obvious. Ed, thanks, my man. I appreciate it. Uh, baseball and cheating, the national pastime. What do you think of it? We'd love to hear from you. Why don't you tweet us at Newsmax TV hashtag America's Forum? You've also got email and Facebook, and you got us coming right back. Stay tuned.